Greetings and welcome back to the New York Virtual Photo Salon. I'm Lavon Hall, your host for this event. Thank you for tuning in last time. I hope the visual story was informative and inspiring. If you haven't seen it yet and the rest of our awesome speakers, click on the links in the description. Also, leave us comments, subscribe, and like this channel. Every now and again, I like to switch things up and invite artists with different styles. Even if the medium has changed, we all for the most part have started with photography. This week, I'm thrilled to present Devin Osorio with his unique designs. Sit back, enjoy the show, and thanks for watching. Hey, 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 que lo que? My name is Devin Osorio. Thank you all for taking the time to share space with me today. I'd like to imagine that we're all in my room slash studio, eating cookies and sipping on some brugal. Just know that I would have bought flowers for the occasion, so please imagine them. Thank you, Lavon and the New York Virtual Photo Salon for inviting me to present my work on this platform. I'm a multimedia artist with a focus on painting, murals, and textile practices, such as embroidery and screen printing. Although I've been surrounded by the arts all of my life, my artistic career did not develop roots until I joined the photography program NYC Seoul back in 2008. Under the wings of Alicia Hansen, I grew as an individual and as an artisan. She taught me to create work that was honest by depicting only that which I knew. She emphasized that art could be made with the simplest of things, including the random things in your room. Understanding that concept allowed me to view everything around me as inspiring, rather than just utilitarian. As I got older and was exposed to other careers, I began the process of letting go of the camera and instead using thread and paint. I became obsessed with materials and their metaphorical qualities. No matter the medium that I use, my work attempts to use material to crystallize and document my experience, that of the Dominican diaspora. My definition of the Dominican diaspora consists of any groups of people of the Dominican descent living off of the island, allowing for development of Dominican-ness that goes beyond the island and merges with a new territory. I find the evolution of culture extremely fascinating, and I've been jumping headfirst into that space of curiosity for years. Creating the picture of island mentality and customs on urban soil. So, let's start from the very beginning. I grew up in Washington Heights, which is located in the uppermost end of Manhattan, sandwiched between Harlem and Inwood. A community that has had an increase of immigrants from the Dominican Republic since the 1970s. Starting with my uncle Ramon in 1971, my family was a part of that body of migration and have lived in Washington Heights and in this apartment since. If you're ever on 175th Street between St. Nicholas and Audubon, look for building 565. Chances are that the apartment on the fifth floor to the left light are on and that one of my cousins are sitting across the street on the steps of the Incarnation School. Tell them to buy a patelito or a Presidente beer on me. My story is not uncommon. Everyone I grew up with has a similar background. Because of such, I use our collective narrative to collage our memories, methods of thinking, developed language, and history to document us. Creating objects and images that are for us, by us. Ordinary objects such as potted plants, trinkets, and street corners are often seen in my work. One motif that I use often are candles and other burning objects such as incense because they seem very much ordinary until placed into the context of a religious shrine. Then the color, the shape, the labeling, and its placement all become of extreme importance. I enjoy contextualizing these common objects because I believe that the mundane and overseen are the spaces in which culture is truly portrayed. This sense of elevating objects is something that I learned from the religious practice of La 21 de Visiones, also known as Los Misterios and Dominican Voodoo. Although I do not practice, I am fascinated by the shrines and their deities. Each saint requests specific flowers, candles, gifts, and rituals in order to make them happy and their protection over you to continue. Under this practice, mundane things become subjects of divine power. With an anthropological lens, I attempt to dissect that which is normal to me and turn them into symbolic relics. 
using these emblematic objects as anchors to create fables that either I've come up with myself, created from narratives I've collected, or from stories shared culturally through oral history. My need to create parables comes from my love of magical realism and its ability to use humor and joyful imagery to depict the purest form of truth. It's complex, but highly effective. The capacity to use positive methods to question, explore, and discuss negative subjects is seen throughout many cultures, including Washington Heights. All over the Heights, you can hear music being played from everywhere, from apartment windows to parked cars. One genre heard often is bachata, which is made up of sad ballads that are meant to be danced to. Using joy in order to get through turmoil is a skill that I find extremely humbling and try to portray my process and work. Ultimately, the mission of my work is to create artifacts for Washington Heights that will be written about in academic texts. This is why it is important to me to always include my community. In the past, I've done this by pulling images from my Facebook slash Instagram friends, devouring any printed images and digital text that I can find, asking friends and family to help create or be the subjects of my work, and interviewing individuals from Washington Heights to create icons that tell our story. With all of this data collected, I've created characters and allegories that I refer to often. One such motif is a potted tropical plant. As a seed is taken from its original soil to be repotted and sold elsewhere, the Dominican diaspora functions the same. Our lineage moved from one space to another and thus laying roots into soil that can be easily transported. Although melancholic, I find this mobility beautiful and worth examining. We see these plants in the homes of hipsters in Brooklyn, but also lining the walls and corners of Caribbean grandparents' homes. Once again, a mundane object becomes figurative in a specific context. There are numerous instances in which I've called or texted with multiple individuals in order to fully contextualize whatever I'm working on. Including others in my process allows me to continue the lessons learned through SALT to produce honest portrayals of my community. I also love working alongside creatives from different mediums to create work that goes beyond my capabilities. One long lasting collaboration is with the Dominican American photographer from the Lower East Side, Christian Rodriguez. Together, we attempt to create work that captures the expansiveness of the Dominican diaspora. We've done this by creating multimedia pieces that utilize photography, illustrations, and textile processes to collage information together onto one frame. The pandemic has granted me something that is easy to imagine but not to acquire, space to think and time to produce, allowing me to begin a studio practice that reflects the deepening of my curiosities rather than the allowance of time. My research has expanded beyond just my neighborhood, but to ceremonial objects from various cultures around the world using their metaphorical properties to funnel them through the lens of Washington Heights. Using artifacts to frame the ways I record and collect the experiences from Washington Heights. Thank you once again for joining me today and have an amazing rest of your day. As you end this video, imagine the song Carta a San Antonio by artist Enrolisa Nunez y el Grupo de Salve de Mata los Indios is playing. And please don't forget to take some cookies home with you. Devin, that was quite entertaining with the background music and your beautiful patterns and textiles. Thank you. Very keen on the way you went from one medium to the next, but then also combined them in different ways. Don't stop being creative. I hope everyone enjoyed this presentation and follow Devin to see more. So please give it a thumbs up, leave comments, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you all for tuning in and the New York Virtual Photosong Committee. I'm Milan Hall and we'll see you next time with some more engaging speakers.